Judge not, July 21st. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged, and with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. Last night I was in a sleepless state much of the time. Many representations passed before me. One was a scene in a council meeting where several were present. One man arose and began finding fault with one of his brethren. I looked at the speaker's garments, and saw that they were very undesirable. Another person arose, and began to state his grievance against a fellow laborer. His garments were of another pattern, and they, too, were undesirable. Still another, and another, arose, and uttered words of accusation and condemnation regarding the course of others. Everyone had some trouble to speak of, some fault to find with someone else. All were presenting the defects of Christians who are trying to do something in our world, and they declared repeatedly that certain ones were neglecting this or that or the other thing, and so on. There was no real order, no polite courtesy, in the meeting. In their anxiety to make others hear, speakers crowded in while others were still talking. Voices were raised, in an effort to make all hear above the din of confusion. After many had spoken, one of authority appeared, and repeated the words, Judge not, that ye be not judged, Christ himself was present. An expression of painfulness came over his countenance as one after another would come forward, with uncouth dress, to expatiate upon the faults of various members of the church. Finally the heavenly visitant arose. So intent were those present on criticizing their brethren, that it was with reluctance that they gave him opportunity to speak. He declared that the spirit of criticism, of judging one another, was a source of weakness in the church today. Things are spoken that should never find utterance. Everyone who by word of mouth places an obstruction in the way of a fellow Christian has an account to settle with God. With earnest solemnity the speaker declared, the church is made of many minds, each of whom has an individuality. I gave my life in order that men and women, by divine grace, might blend in revealing a perfect pattern of my character, while at the same time retaining their individuality. No one has the right to destroy or submerge the individuality of any other human mind, by uttering words of criticism and fault-finding and condemnation, love toward God and man.